See? Oh my god! Get him off. Off. Hold on. He's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Feels like I'm getting stung. While our car was being reupholstered in Bogota, we found out you can get cheap flights to the Amazon rainforest and visit three countries at the same time. So we decided to purchase some tickets. This is a pretty nice airport. What do you got going on here, dude? Nothing of my concern. What? Yeah, nothing of your concern. There are multiple flights leaving Bogota daily, and round trip tickets run between $60 and $120 depending on when you leave. Flights are only an hour and a half, and this is the only way to access the region from Bogota. So when getting off the plane, we have to pay a tourist tax. How was the flight, dude? That was fine. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of weight, but we had a lot of leg room, which was surprising. And we did have some turbulence, yeah. that's for sure. Upon exiting the airport, we were approached by multiple tour guides from different agencies. And instead of waiting in line for all the taxis that arrive, we decided to take a tuk-tuk. It was already there and it was much faster. The first thing we noticed was that the streets were flooded. There had been a lot of rain in the region and many of the potholes that lined the streets were as big as little kiddie pools. Our hotel had recommended Tierras Amazonicas for lunch, which was within walking distance. That looks really good. Pretty good, dude. Yes, it's really good. It has, it's caramel rice yeah. with pork, chicken, beef, and shrimp. Nice. I'm gonna have to try that. Wow. Okay. Absolutely. The tuk-tuk driver from the airport happened to be parked right in front of the restaurant as we were leaving. He suggested an artisanal ice cream shop for dessert. We hopped in and he took us for a mini tour of Leticia on our way. As we perused the ice cream flavors, we noted truly Amazonian flavors such as ant, coca leaf, and worm. Of course, we tried them all. After sampling and ordering the ice creams, one of the workers showed us a bowl of the grubs they make ice cream out of. Bronson played with it, and I was too squeamish to even pick it up. But I tried. And in true Mills fashion, we had to check out the dental care here in the Amazon. I mean, why not? What happened, dude? So yesterday I was eating a hard candy, and one of the brackets popped off. However, it didn't fall off, it just, uh, it's stuck okay. right there. Mm -hmm. Set the glue back on, huh? Yeah. The dentist was very thorough and professional. She was able to glue his bracket back on, and it only cost us 10 US dollars. How'd it go, dude? Yeah, all good? So we have to get clothing for the Amazon because none of us brought 
uh, proper pants or long sleeve shirts. So now we're going to this store so we can grab cheap long pairs of pants and shirts. Sometimes we find that our tiny wardrobe doesn't allow for specific types of clothes that we need. We usually end up buying cheap clothes for what we need it for and donating it to a community later. After all the shopping was done, it was time to retire to our new hotel so that we could rest before our excursion out to the Amazon for the next three days. There is a vast range of accommodations costing anywhere between $8 for a bed to $300 in a resort. This hotel with hot water and AC was $32 per night. Just arrived here at the George of the Jungle. All our stuff together. When we arrived at Georgia the Jungle, we were offered a variety of refreshments to start our day. It's super fun. We're traveling with, I think, six other people. Who knows what's going to happen? And in there, you have your guide, Patrick, waiting for you. Well, today we get on a riverboat to go two hours up the river and then we stop in Peru in a place called Gamboa and that's where our jungle tour begins. Base camp. Base camp. We were all outfitted with rubber boots and we headed out for a short walk in the rain. Ticket change for Peru? Yeah, we had ticket change for Peru and apparently Peru uses the Bolivian Real. So that way you have like, I think the exchange rate is like five to one, something like that. So, five reals to one US dollar. Cool. We first stopped to pick up some snacks before we exchanged our money, and then we headed out to the dock where we would meet our boat, which would take us out to the Amazon. Keep in mind, this is the Amazon. It is wet, hot, and incredibly humid, uncomfortably so. This kid was so cute, I wanted to take him with us. But the thought of going to a Colombian prison because he wasn't mine did not appeal to me. All right, you ready for this, dude? I'm absolutely ready. <laughs> We're going down the Amazon on a boat. Yep. This is Jorge. He was our captain for the three days we were on the Amazon. It was so rainy as we were heading out there that Jorge had to start bailing out the back of his boat. This is Miguel. He was our tour guide that was taking us through the Amazon and telling us all of the excursions that we would be doing and guiding us through the jungle at night. arrived to this base camp in the middle of the Amazon jungle. This is where we're going to be spending the next three nights uh, just hanging out and taking tours from here. And in true Caden fashion, immediately he made friends with a little puppy called Blanquita. Here at this base camp, this is where we were served all of our meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And back here, through this little door on the right, is all of our sleeping quarters. We have some fresh water. Hola. Looks like some bathrooms. Here we have the main kitchen. The accommodations are very basic and rustic. You have a bed with mosquito net, a full bathroom, including a sink, flush toilet, and a cold water shower.
The rain on that first day made it nearly impossible for us to be able to do some of the activities that we had already planned. So instead, we pulled out some UNO cards and played a game of UNO. We were all very tired and hungry and by the time lunch was served, it was such a treat. Look at this meal. Rice, pasta, lentils, chicken, cucumber, tomato salad. It was all delicious. V took a nap waiting for the rain to end. After the rain stopped, it was time to head out on our first excursion, which was bird watching. Then we were off to catch some caimans. Time to go look for some birds and some caimans. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I guess so. You remember we came from there yep. this morning. Yes. And now we continue the channel that way. It all looks the same to me. I cannot believe how they know where we are. But the anacondas is the most, for the locals, is the most dangerous animal. Because yeah, the anaconda you attack you in the night. If you look around here, you can see that we are surrounded by lush foliage and mangroves. Maneuvering these waterways is not easy. There are so many hidden passages that are easy to pass by. That's why having a guide is essential. The jungle is unforgiving and easy to get lost in. There were so many places that we had to stop and either untangle the propeller, stuck in the Amazon, or weed whack our way through here with a machete, like this. This tiny itty bitty little frog we found hitching a ride on my jacket. Caden decided he was going to play with him and after a while put him back in the water where he belonged. This is what they call the common spider. They're located everywhere around the Amazon. And I am so thrilled. I mean, just look at my face. As the dark settled in, it was time for us to finally go out and find some caimans and hopefully catch some. Navigating through these passageways at night presents a different set of issues. You definitely need to be cognizant of the top clearance of the boat. After about a half an hour of searching for a caiman, we finally found one. Yeah. Check him out, dude. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice catch. Okay, hey, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>
We kept trolling for caimans on our way back to base camp, and just as we were about to call it a night, we found this guy, an 18-month-old caiman. Let me get Vanessa here. Look at me. I'm trying to, but I had a bug just fly in my eyeball. That's a wasp. Look at this guy. He's huge. A big wasp. What do you think, Beth? He's really soft. I wasn't expecting that. And he's really, like, calm. So far. Chiquito. Tranquilo. Mm-hmm. Look at this guy. <laughs> We released him back into the water and headed back to base camp where we'd finally eat dinner. Ooh, he went under. So what'd you think, dude? Uh, I didn't hold him because personally I thought he was just too big for, in my opinion, he was just too big for me to hold. <laughs> right. um, I thought he was cool. I, yeah, he's really cool. He's, he's really soft. His scales were uh, smooth. Yeah. Pretty cool. Really smooth. Alright. The following morning we woke up to the sounds of the Amazon. We walked outside to see the river covered in a blanket of mist. It was beautiful, serene, and almost mystical. Had a nice full night's rest. We have a generator here and they ran out of fuel around nine o'clock, 9.30. So I went to sleep shortly after that and woke up about 5.30. So it's a pretty long, restful night. It's always cool waking up and seeing all this fog and hearing all the birds outside. They're super loud this morning. What's on the agenda today? Well, I'm gonna play with this puppy for a little bit. Then we're gonna have breakfast. Then we get to go piranha fishing and trekking to the village. On oh, the dolphins too, huh? On the dolphins, yeah. What? Just finished breakfast. Now we're gonna go fishing for piranha. We had been advised that we were gonna be out all day and we wouldn't be back for lunch until after three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So we loaded up on a whole bunch of snacks before we hit the boat. We picked up a new passenger and headed out to explore more waterways and hopefully find what's lurking underneath the surface. First order of business was to try to find somewhere to go piranha fishing, but then we got distracted. On the way to go piranha fishing, we ended up seeing two different species of monkeys just hanging out in the trees, jumping from branch to branch and just giving us a great show. These guys are fast. Because our first day in the Amazon had been so rainy, we had planned to go to Gamboa, which is this little town right here, but instead we had to pass. It was starting to get really hot and muggy as 10 o'clock approached. We all decided that it would be a good idea to jump in the water to cool off before we got to Piranha Land. Jump in, dude. Swimming with piranhas. Uh, there's probably piranhas in there. Everybody just th don't bleed. After cooling off, it was finally time to head into the jungle to do some piranha fishing. The first thing that we needed to do was cut up some bait. 
and because piranhas are carnivores and they go for meat, we cut up some chicken. So what's the procedure for catching piranha? I don't know. No? Mm -mm. What do you say? Something about slapping the water to come out. Brings them from the bottom? Yep, because they like to live at the bottom. And they hear the splashing and then we have to like... And then, and then they come to that. And then, then they come to that. They and come and eat the chicken that we just put on the yep. hook. This is truly a rustic fishing experience. There are no reels here, just a piece of stick and fishing line. After multiple failed attempts by just about everybody on our boat, Caden was the only person to have caught a piranha. We decided that it was time to head to a different spot and try our hand somewhere else. Maybe we'd have better luck. All right, it's time to head to a different spot. Yeah. I caught one piranha, now I can catch four more. Eat all your vape and not your line. Big ears, huh? Did you get it? Look at that big old catfish. <laughs> so huge. I caught a tiny little catfish that we ended up using for bait. Today's catch. Man, we're going to eat well tonight. <laughs> hope, hope you guys saved your appetites. So you caught the only piranha. Where are we heading now? Um, dolphins. Which dolphins? We're going to see pink dolphins. All right. Off in the distance, we ended up seeing a couple of the pink dolphins that the Amazon has been known for. So we circled around to try to spot them again. Tres. Míralos, 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 míralos. Go. It's a little hard to see as they're jumping out of the water, so here it is again in slow motion. Kate and Jose and I all jumped in the water to see if we could swim with the pink dolphins, and then we were able to see them off in the distance. Hi. Pink dolphins actually start out as gray or blue dolphins when they're young, and it's not until they get older that they start to turn pink due to the minerals in the Amazon. How hard was it to spot the uh, it was it wasn't hard as much as it's tricky because the dolphins will sometimes be in front of you and other times they'll be right behind you. We're going to go see some monkeys at a monkey sanctuary and they might be crawling all over us. Back on the boat, we took about a 15 to 20 minute ride up to the monkey sanctuary where the guy has five different species of monkeys that can't be rehabilitated to be released back into the wild. So they're going to be living their days out at the sanctuary. Check these guys out. Before we even docked, we ended up having monkeys climbing all over the boat, hanging out with us, climbing on us, trying to open our bags to see what we had, see if we would give them any food. This little monkey is a howler monkey, and he had just gotten to the rescue 10 days prior, and it's clear that he had been somebody's pet. He just wanted to be held. What you looking for, guy? <laughs> You got some long arms there, buddy. 
All of the monkeys that live on the sanctuary live out in the open. There are no cages here. They are not locked up at night. There's nothing like that. They live amongst the trees. They eat all the leaves, but they're not averse to snatching somebody's bags of chips either. Is this your little pet? Oh, he's jealous. Look at that guy. Man, monkey business. <laughs> Then we tried our hand at fishing for the piruruku. It is one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. <laughs> wow. Now it's Caden's turn to try to lure out the piruruku. Did you see it? Here you can see him lurking under the water, his gaze just fixed on this fish that's hovering above. It's even hard to capture it in slow motion. After leaving the monkey refuge, we are now heading to go check out someone's anaconda. Let me see. Let me get to see. Ah. He's kind of outside the little cage there. This little guy wouldn't even go into the pen because he knows better. He'd be the lunch for that anaconda. Careful when you get in and make sure you duck so you don't hit your head on the thing like I did. And I'm short. <laughs> Again, I don't know how the guides know where we are. Everything looks the same out here. It's the same waterways, the same passageways, the same flora, same fauna, everything. After spending the full day doing all of those excursions, we were exhausted and we were hungry and we headed back to base camp. We're back for a well-deserved meal. After dinner, we got to enjoy a group of French students hopping the water back and forth. I'm not so sure that I would have chosen to jump in this water, as there are flushing toilets here and all of the waste products goes right underneath you. Good times. Mosquitoes are out in full force tonight. Oh my god. They're so horrible. We put on the extra DEET uh, and it's wax. Not Helping. So it's They're helping. biting right through my clothes. Everyone's getting geared up for a night hike. Amazon strength. Mm -hmm. The wax actually works better than the spray and it stays on for much longer. It's only 22% deep. We're all good. 
only. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> All right, we're off on a trek. Maybe an hour, depending on how much water we have to trek through. This is so sketchy. Can you go to the Yeah. Well, that's deep. We took this rickety ass canoe 20 feet across the water because the water was chest deep. We're going for a swim. Are we doing it in threes? Okay, I need to hold on. Adios, Bubba. As he pushed him across the water, the guide was telling him not to move. If they moved, they risked Adios. tipping over. How could this have been prevented? So we have to cross this three at a time, back and forth, to get to our side so we can start like kind of hiking through the jungle, I guess. Ah, a little fish. A fish caught a ride. Adios, fish. Termites. Termitas. If you put them on your hands. You can eat them. No, and then you rub them. They act as mosquito repellent. As we got further into our hike in the Amazon, at one point, our guide had asked us to turn off our lights and guided us in the dark through the Amazon. What you got? This is the, the ceiba. Oh yeah, ceiba tree. See? Look at that. This ceiba more or less 300 years old. 300 years like old. 30 or 40 meters high, you know? Yeah. Uh, Look at this spider. The size of that thing. I mean, that is a massive spider. Oh the scorpion spider. <laughs> Another scorpion spider. Those are cool. Right here. So there's a hole there. Don't step where I step. What's up? You okay? Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, hop on her, catch a ride. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Dangerous things. I don't. Oh, touch. thank you. Oh, Gross. oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> no. no. <sighs> yeah. Dude, you gotta hold him. He's pretty cool. Feel that. No, thank you. <laughs> Hard pass. What? Hard pass. That feels pretty cool. Okay, it's a grab him. It's not. It's not. It's pretty cool. Yeah. He feels cool. Mm -mm. Let him crawl on you, dude. See? Oh my god! Get him off. off. Hold on. He's pretty cool, huh? There were hundreds of these centipedes all over the Amazon. There were even the little babies all hanging out in the trees. It was actually, for me, quite disgusting and fascinating all at the same time. Come here. Come here, little guy. He's so cool. He's cool, but he's so gross. Remember how I said our guide had us turn off the lights and had us trek through some of the water? This was one of those times. 
We listened for a few minutes as the sounds of the Amazon got louder and louder. Look at that huge spider. He's gross. He's massive. And gross. The two things that we saw most of, spiders and centipedes. Maybe hundreds of spiders, but definitely thousands of centipedes. All kinds of creatures around here. Oh yeah, there is. Watch out for these bad boys. Mm -hmm. Fire ants. Wow. See, see. With our night jungle trek coming to a close, it was time for us to get back on that rickety ass canoe to be shoved over to the other side of this tiny little pond. Been bailing out a lot of boats lately. <laughs> Better than Guatemala though. No, you do. <laughs> it's right behind you. There you go. This crazy colorful centipede right here is very poisonous. It's one of the centipedes in the wild that will kill you. Man, look at all those crazy bugs. That's just on one stump around here. Whew. That's the end of that thing. Yep. The tour itself was pretty amazing. I enjoyed how you could just go through the jungle with the guy. Yeah. It was really natural. The best driving of camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there were some parts that were pretty terrifying, mostly because you had to turn off your lights and you had to hold on to each other. And you couldn't tell what you were going through. All right. You had sections of water that were deep and some of them that were shallow. And all in all, it was a pretty amazing trip. Sweet. Thanks, dude. Another beautiful morning. Little Diaz. <laughs> the night had been so hot and so muggy and so still that neither one of us slept very well the night before. We weren't sure what we were supposed to be doing, but I was pretty sure we were supposed to be doing some sort of jungle hike, maybe going through Gamboa. Right. Rides is far away. So yeah. Probably when she takes the day trip on Tuesday, I think, mm -hmm. she will see that they were, she was like painting, but just for the show. Mm -hmm. also, Here, Miguel is explaining to us the difference between the tribal people that put on the shows and the real indigenous tribal people. In order to see the real indigenous tribal people, you need to take a 20 day boat ride up the Brazilian side. That's breakfast. Arepa. Arepa. <laughs> Today we just found out that we're not going to Gamboa. We're going to be going to a jungle trek. It's a little bit toasty today, so it should be interesting. Ready for this, buddy? I'm ready. Yeah. I have my nine different types of snacks with me. Yeah, you don't want to starve in the jungle. Okay. Yes. Listo? Listo! Hey, All right. This is great. Water abound. Well, we can't go that way. We're going to try another way. The original waterway that we wanted to take was blocked by huge swaths of grass. So we ended up having to backtrack and go a different way. Okay. It looks a little more clear. 
Mm -hmm. What was that? I said it's amazing to me where they maneuver these boats through. Like this is a long boat and we're trying to get it there. So we're going to cut down some trees <laughs> to go through the jungle. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> if you ever take one of these jungle tours, you will be impressed at the things that these boats can do, the places that they can go, and the ways that these captains can maneuver them. Looks like this is where we're going for a hike. We did have to cut down at least one small sapling in order right. to get unstuck. Let's do this. Adios. <laughs> we were able to see the acai tree and even try some of their fresh berries. And did you know that if you add sugar to these, they lose 80% of their nutritional value? All right, heading into the water again like we did last night. More acai berries. After working out, yeah, it's so good functional. Oh yeah, just don't add sugar. This is called the Shiwanwako tree, or ironwood in English. <laughs> Aptly named because of the sound that it makes when it's hit with a metal object. What? It's very hard. It's very Miguel told us that if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how to cut this tree down and you're using a chainsaw, it's very easy to break your chainsaw blade. We continued our jungle trek and at some point the water got so deep we had actually considered building a bridge. That bridge didn't work so... We're just gonna get wet. Toma. There's muchas cantidades de esto en un container. Hot water. Wait 10 minutes, squeeze. This is Miguel explaining to us how to make acai juice. Acai? The berries start out very, very hard. Too hard to actually chew. You want? Yeah. In the past, to make boots, many things, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, rubber tree. Now it's, it's protected because we don't use it anymore. Because oil comes, oil comes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Silicones and stuff. Yeah. With safety in mind, Miguel is marking the tree so that we know if we've been here before. For our route back. You're gonna get wet. You got this. There. <laughs> This was one of the shallower areas that we ended up wading through on our trek through the jungle. <laughs> Looks like we found some people in the middle of the jungle. And then up here we have a tarantula. Oh, I see it. Wow. This tarantula had to be at least the size of my palm. It was enormous. <laughs> How deep did you fall in? During the jungle trek, I actually fell into a huge hole underneath this water here. It was so deep, my foot never even touched bottom. Look at some special Amazonian mosquitoes there. <laughs> wow. Glad I bathed in deep. Cool tree frog. 
now we're just crossing a lake. Miguel is explaining to us that this tarantula was probably eaten by other tarantulas after it had died. So. Yes, other tarantulas, other tarantulas. Yeah. eat other tarantulas. That's a little deep. So deep in this part. In the past, <laughs> the people used this for hunting. Oh, for blood arts, huh? Yeah, here is the, this is the poison, look. This is the veneno. Es la famosa catagua. This is the poison. You see? Poison dark. You drink one big quantity, yeah. one cup, problems in the stomach. Burning. If you get in your skin, you suffer a burning. No? But if they buy you like him, infection. That's all. Finally out of the lake here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know this? What is it? Lulo. It's what a it? fruit very, very like. delicious. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like an acid, but at the same time it's sweet. Yeah, it's magnificent. <laughs> this is where fishermen kind of came out here and camped. Made a little tent and posted up for a few nights, I guess. As Bronson sat here admiring this tree with thousands of baby centipedes on it, we were off in the distance admiring an otter that was swimming in the lake. Okay. Nunca te dijo que no. Sí. If you ever get lost in the jungle, look for these trees that look like they have wings at the base. They can save your life. Piece of the stick, three times. People are looking for you, they hear and they respond. Through the sound, you can be rescued. Mm -hmm. ah. All that this does has wings. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's it not. The sound echoes loudly through the jungle, alerting people and letting them know that you're lost. But it's like a black widow. This thing is massive. It's supposed to be like a black widow. Look at that, don't even touch that thing. It's huge. If you get lost in the jungle and you need water, you need to look for these trees called water root. Right on. It's more a vine than a root. You going up, dude? Yes, I am. Where are you headed? To Tarzan. Oh, okay. To Tarzan? Tarzan's a person. I know. He's up there. Leaf cutter ants do not want to get bit by these. I was just learning about water roots and how they absorb water during the summer. And when you cut them open, it's actually a great way to get water because the roots hold all of the water. It's amazing. That's cool. Oh, you're going swimming, huh? <laughs> wow! Even though we were heading back to civilization today, it didn't appeal to Adios. me to get this wet. See if we can avoid not going to our neck in water. Oh, that was amazing. What happened? He, he stepped into the into a hole. I mean, the way yeah. to hear. What Caden didn't tell you <laughs> is that he's the one that guided Anderson right into that hole. Finally made it back. Green. It has a blue outline with a bright green color. Our savior's here. Finally back. What did you think about this hike to the jungle? I thought the hike to the jungle was pretty cool. We had a couple of areas where the water would go into your boots. <laughs> and uh, there were a couple of places where you would fall into holes that were, what was it, knee deep or... Or to your hip. Or to, or to the hip, mm -hmm. that's for sure. 
Nice. Cool. Final lunch. As we prepare to leave, the next tour comes. The cycle continues. With lunch complete, it was time for us to head out and back into Leticia, into civilization. With better weather, beautiful skies, and wind in our hair, we headed back to Leticia to end our Amazonian trip. And thanks to the wonderful people at Georgia the Jungle, we had the most amazing experience that we'll never forget.